Hey everyone, Shane here with eTurner.com. Today I have a 2013 Ford F-150 and I'm gonna walk through how to install the Dimco 13,000 pound auto slide underbed rail kit. Before we get into the features of this setup, let's talk about uh, some of the different setups you can put on your truck. Now this is the five and a half foot bed, so that leaves us two options. We put a slider in or we put a rotating turret on the trailer. Problem with the rotating turret, is depending on the size of the nose of the trailer, the rotating turret may or may not work. If the nose of your trailer is a little bit bigger, the rotating turret is not going to work because the nose of the trailer, when you're doing a turn, is still going to make contact with the cab of the truck. So let's go into a slide feature or a sliding hitch. With a five and a half foot bed, we cannot use uh, the BMW slider. The reason is, is B and W you have to unlock it, and when it slides, it slides all the way to the back. There is no middle stopping point. If that slides all the way to the back, your kingpin is actually going to hit your tailgate. So you'd either have to remove your tailgate completely, or not use that hitch. I recommend don't remove your tailgate. Dimco Auto Slide. What that does is, it's only going to move back as far as it needs to while you're making a turn. The only time it's going to go all the way to the very back is when you have to make a 90 degree turn. Other than that, it's only going to come back about halfway. So we're not going to have to worry about our kingpin hitting our tailgate. Now let's go over some of the features of this setup. This is a fifth wheel auto slide along with the base rail kit. So you're going to have your underbed kit and what they are, it's an actual puck system. So Unlike your above bed rails, if you were to remove this, your bed's completely flat and it gives you plenty of room. That being said, this hitch is not light. This is, is gonna take two or three people to get out. Just keep that in mind if you plan on, you know, taking this in and out, have a couple people around it to get it done. Uh, but it is very easy to take out and install. As I mentioned, it's gonna be a puck system. It's completely under bed. Each rail that runs underneath the bed has a hole in it. And inside of that hole, there's a pin that runs lengthwise, front to back. On the hitch, it has locking pins. It has one in front and one in back on each side. You'll notice on the handle, it's gonna say unlock. So when it's out like this, it's unlocked. That's gonna allow you to lift the uh, base out of the truck and remove it. When it locks, in the bottom of this, this pin here, there's actually a groove and a flat spot. When it's unlocked, that flat spot slides past that pin. When you turn it, that pin actually fits inside that groove and that's what locks the hitch down to the bed of the truck. Once you have your handle locked, or your hitch locked down to the bed of the truck, it's gonna have a pin and clip. It's gonna slide right through this plate. It'll clip down at the bottom and that keeps your handle from accidentally coming unlocked. Our head is gonna have a nice wide opening. Makes it easy to couple and uncouple from our trailer even if we're at an angle. Uh, it's gonna help guide it into the center. We're going to have a 360 degree contact on our kingpin, plus this plate that slides across. So once it's locked into place, we'll have a pin that goes in here, keeps our handle from accidentally coming unlocked or a trailer coming off. And we're going to have 360 degrees of contact. So we slide that open. Nice feature is this is kind of wore out and it may be a little bit loose, but it's going to be auto locking. So when you couple up to your trailer, you don't have to come back out and lock it into place. It's automatically going to do it. And you can see, even with this wore out, there's not a whole lot of place. So we're going to have a nice tight fit around that kingpin. We don't have to worry about a lot of movement in there that we may feel in the vehicle when we're pulling a trailer. Now this particular hitch is going to have a 13,000 pound gross vehicle weight rating. So, but the main thing is you want to keep in mind is the hitch you choose, you want to make sure one, that it's going to be able to handle the weight of your trailer. Two, the vehicle that is being installed in, you want to make sure the vehicle can handle the weight of the trailer with the hitch. This is going to be a nice, very durable steel construction, dimpled powder coat finish, uh, gives it a very nice look. 
the thick powder coat finish is really going to help resist rust and corrosion. It's going to keep it looking nice for a really long time. The underbed rails are constructed of the same thing, have the same finish on them. The kit is going to come with all the necessary hardware. As far as the installation process, um, it, it can be a little bit trying. There's not a whole lot of hardware to put in, but it can be a little bit trying with the measurements you have to do in the bed, getting your rails in underneath, and then trying to line everything up. A lot of times, uh, the hardest part is making sure that your holes for your pucks are in the right places. Now that we've gone over some of the features, let's walk through how to get installed. To start our installation, we need to start in the bed of the truck. Now you can see I already have some marks here. Um, the directions, I will say, are a little hard to follow. And the reason I did this is I want to try to figure out an easier way for you at home to do it, other than following the directions that are on there. So what I found was we're going to make three marks right off the bat. We're going to find the center of the bed. Normally, you find the center, you're going to have two raised corrugation here that run down to the center. We're going to get into this lower one. We're going to go from the edge of the bed, not the tailgate, the edge of the bed. We're going to come up 34 and a half inches. We're going to put a mark here and a mark on this side. Now we're going to take this line and go all the way across that lower corrugation. And what we're going to do is we're going to come to each side raise corrugation, raise corrugation, this lower corrugation, we're going to do that same measurement. 34 and a half, mark that all the way across. Then we're going to do that same thing on this side. Again, one, two, low, lower corrugation, 34 and a half. We're just going to mark this lower corrugation. There's no reason to go all the way across the bed with the mark. Then we need to find exact center on our bed. So we're going to go between our wheel wells, and we need to mark that going front to back. So we're basically going to have a cross right there. From here, from that very center mark, we're going to go out 14 and 13 sixteenths. And we're going to do this going each side. And then you're going to put a mark front to back. This line, or these marks, are going to be the center of your rear rail. Where these cross here are going to be our rear puck holes. And I'm just doing it to double check. And I would suggest doing the same. Those are going to be the rear puck holes on our rear uh, cross member. I'm going to mark that all the way across. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Now from our center, and it may be easier if you draw a line, you know, come in between your wheel walls here, put you a mark, and draw this line up to here. We need to go 14 and 13 sixteenths out. That's good. And we'll do the same thing this way. You can see I kind of have a finger mark there. These marks here are going to be our front puck holes. Next what we need to do is we're going to measure across this way and across this way, 32 and 9 sixteenths. What we're doing here is making sure that we're squared. Once you know you're square, we're going to come back with a small drill bit. And we're going to drill a pilot hole in the center of each of those marks. We'll go down underneath, install our brackets, and make sure they line up. Now before we do any drilling, make sure you check underneath, make sure we're not going to hit anything. Next we're going to put in our base rails. We're going to have a front and a rear, and they should be marked. If this sticker's not on there, the way you're going to know is this is going to be the rear one. You can see how it has this rolled side, uh, our front one. 
is just going to be a cross member and the holes are just going to be small. They're not going to have these larger openings in them. When we slide this in, we want this part to go towards the hat channel or towards the front of the vehicle. We want this section to be facing up. This flat side to be down. So we'll go in between our frame rail and the edge of our bed. Look at this. Sit in here where it's secured. And I'll go underneath and I'll slide it up on top of the other frame rail over there. Next, we're going to do the same thing with the front one, except our front one's going to go in front of the hat channel instead of behind it. Next, we're going to have a shim that looks like this. We're going to slide it in between our cross member, our base rails, and the frame rail. We want this hole to be towards the outside, so we're going to go underneath. We're just going to raise it up, and we're going to slide it under, and we're going to line up the hole. We're going to do that on the front one and the rear one. We're going to do that on both sides. Next, we're going to have frame brackets that are going to look like this. The oblong holes are going to be at the top. You're going to have a driver and passenger side, and you want this flat side to go towards the frame rail. So it's essentially going to sit like this, right up against the frame rail. Before we set that in place, we're going to take a large hex bolt and a flat washer, and you want to get an iron lock nut. We're going to have one for each hole on each side. So we're going to set this in place. And it may be easier if you have an extra set of hands to uh, help you hold this bracket up while we allow you the hardware in. Like this. We'll go right up through the hole like that. And then we'll put on a nylon lock. Again, we want to do this on the front and the back, on each side. You notice that the nut is going inside and not on the bottom. With our hardware loosely installed, we know our holes that are coming down through the bed, the small pilot holes, are in the general vicinity of the holes on our cross members. We can go back up top and we can open up our holes all the way. Our frame brackets here with the oblong holes is going to allow us to adjust these from side to side to get us lined up with the holes a little bit better. Now we're going to take a two inch hole saw bit and we're going to open up each one of our holes. What I find to make it easier is find a small piece of plywood, drill a two inch hole in it, and we're going to use that as a guide. That way when we start hitting metal, our blade isn't jumping around and making that hole uh, oblong. This. Once we get one done, we're going to repeat the process for the three remaining holes. Once we get our holes drilled out, we're going to come back and we're going to file the edges to get the burrs off. Once we get all the burrs off, get everything cleaned up here. And then we want to come back and we want to spray that bare metal uh, with some Rust-Oleum protectant. I'm just using clear, it really doesn't matter what color you use. We'll let that dry for just a few minutes. Now before we tighten anything underneath, we're going to get our fifth wheel base put together. You're going to have two side brackets, and then you're going to have plates. They're going to be spacer plates that go in between the bracket and the fifth wheel base. You need to determine if you're going to need the thicker one or the skinnier one. Uh, you're going to have one for each side. For this particular install, we're using the thicker of the two spacer plates. You'll notice, I have it, there's two sets of holes. There's higher holes and there's a set of lower ones. I have it set in the lowest position uh, for now. I can always come back later on and we can raise it up to the higher if it's not sitting high enough. That being said, if you're using the lower set of holes, you're gonna use four bolts. 
hex bolt, flat washer on the outside. On the inside, you're going to use a nylon lock nut. If you raise it up and you're using the top holes, you're going to use four holes on the top and then two holes on the bottom. So we're going to use a total of six bolts, flat washer to nuts on each side. Again, that's going to be in the highest position if that's where you're going to put it. Once you get your side brackets mounted, you have your hitch uh, base sitting in place. This little plate here and these long bolts come in the kit. And this is to keep the front of it from shifting. You want to make sure that this is on before you go down underneath and start uh, tightening up your hardware. You're going to take this bolt, feed it into this hole through this plate. You're going to put a nut on it. Then you're going to thread it into the weld nut that's in this bottom bracket here. You're going to do one on each side. And then you're going to thread that down in until it stops. You're going to tighten this nut up against the bottom of this plate and then tighten this nut down onto the plate. That's going to keep our front, the front part of our hitch, again, from shifting. We're going to use a 15 16 socket wrench. We're going to tighten it harder. It may be a little bit easier if you use a swivel and come from underneath. Next, we're going to drill out holes into our frame through this plate. To make it easier, if you don't have your wheel off, it might be easier if you raise your frame rail so you can get an extra drill in here. We're going to start off with a pilot hole because our frame's pretty thick. What I like to do is go from our pilot hole and do uh, skip a couple bits. Uh, we're going to open it up to a half inch, so we don't want to go from a pilot hole straight up to a half inch because it'll you're going to eat up your bits. Skip a couple bits and do a step all the way up to a half inch. It's going to make it a lot easier on your bits and a lot easier on your shoulders. Once we get our pilot hole drilled, again, we're going to skip up a couple bits, bigger sizes. It'll make it a lot easier to open that hole up. We're going to have four holes in each frame bracket that we need to drill out. Keep in mind, we're going from a small bit, we want to finish it out with a half inch. Again, I like to step up, saves drill bits and saves your shoulders. And finally, our half inch. Once you have all your holes drilled on each side, you're going to take the pull wire that comes in your kit, spring side. You should have an access hole in front of and behind the bracket that you'll be able to fit the hardware through. If not, you'll have an access hole on the inside of the frame rail towards the back. We're going to take this, we're going to slide it in, and then we're going to come out of our access hole like that. We're going to take these bolts are what we're going to be installing. We're going to be installing from the inside out. So we're going to thread it onto our pull wire. Put it in. And we're going to come out. Now what we don't want to do is we don't want to just want to pull this wire off because it's the only wire we have. We're going to put a little bit of pressure on our bolt. And then we're going to unthread it off of there. Once we get our pull wire off, we're going to add on a lock washer and a nut. We're going to do that with the three remaining holes on this side and the four holes on the opposite side. Once we get them all in, we'll come back with a three quarter inch socket. We're going to tighten them all down. Once we have everything tightened up, we're going to come up top. We're going to install the head onto the base. 
we're going to take out this pin. We're going to slide this large pin out. We're going to take our head. And on the bottom, there's going to be a hole right here. We're going to take this guy and we're going to push it in like that. Set that down. We'll line up our holes and we're going to take this pin, slide it through the head. Once you have your head in place, take a look at it and see where it is in line with your bed rails. We have it sitting in the lowest position. If we were to raise it up, I'm afraid it's going to sit pretty high. But ideally, the point of the adjustment is when you have your fifth wheel hooked up, the nose of your trailer how it comes over your bed, you want at least six inches between your bed rail and the bottom of the nose on the trailer. So uh, that's why they give you the adjustment. So it's really going to be up to you whether this is going to be high enough for you or not. Once you have it in place, you can go ahead and get your handle installed. There's going to be four holes. So if you notice how high this handle is sitting right now, uh, if we had a tonneau cover on here, which the one he had was the slide one, it may come in contact with that. And if we raise it up, it's definitely going to come in contact with it. This will be above the bed rails. That's why they give you extra holes, so it allows you to turn that handle and adjust it if you raise this up, if you have a tonneau cover to uh, potentially allow this to, or allow a tonneau cover to cover this in the bed of the truck. We'll get our nut and bolt in place. And we can come back and we'll tighten that down. Once you have your handle installed, you're ready to go. It's going to do it for a look at an installation on the Dimco underbed rail kit for the 13,000 pound auto slide on a 2013 Ford F-150.